Luke 4, verses 1 through 15. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give you, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him, and he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from thence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned to the power in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. So, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, he, which he received when he was baptized, he received the Spirit of God. Up until, up until that point, Jesus was like all of the Jews. All of the anointing was through the intellectual study of the Word, or the primary part of the anointing. As I understand that the Jews, they had the Levites, had, they had song and praise through song. But the primary communication between God and his people was intellectual through the law. So Jesus received the Spirit, and he returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. The wilderness is the spiritual dimension. But at the beginning, I could not understand that, why the Spirit of God would lead him and, you know, to, to this this encounter with the devil and Satan. But today I understand that we will all face this. And I think that I think that the temptation in my life has been going on for years. And I think that's true for all of us. It's a, a continuous, ongoing temptation by our fallen nature. Because that's who Satan and the devil are. It's our fallen nature. In Revelation chapter 20, we're told it's that old serpent. Satan and the devil. So who is the serpent? I believe the serpent came into existence when the man laid hold of the power of the soul. And he became that wise one with power. Okay. So, let's take a look. So Jesus now has received the spirit in addition to the intellectual relationship with God. Okay. And um, he's being led into the spirit to be tested. And that's what I said. It was either at the beginning of this message or in the first exhortation. Rather, this is what the Jews have to go through. They need to be emancipated from the... the ch and I don't, I don't mean to insult anybody, but they need to be emancipated from their childish state, whereby their, every aspect of their life is legislated. Every aspect of their life is under the law. That makes it easy for them. At some point, we have to internalize our parents' instructions and go out and live in the real world. Well, it's time for the Jew, it was 2,000 years ago, it was time for the Jew to go out and live in the real spiritual world. What made, what, what made the opportunity for the Jew to come of age a reality 2,000 years ago? The reality was that the... Uh, the reality was that the, the Spirit of God was being poured out upon Israel and that Jesus was sent 
to demonstrate that this not shouldn't even say the spirit of the spirit of the Son was being poured out upon Israel. Jesus and John the Baptist said, Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is the Son of God. It's the next level of soul. So Jesus and John the Baptist were announcing the next level of soul. Okay. The level of the level of the Son. When the Son dwells in you, if we learn from him, then we be become caught up into the life of the Son, and we, there's no separation between the Son and his vessel, which is us. So, so we become the Son of God. You know, God is training the Son, the Son is training us to be replicas, images, and likenesses of the nature and the glory of God in the earth. That's what it's all about. And each level has to learn to be a replica or an expression of the glory of God, which is the opinion of God, and the nature of God in the earth. We're all learning. See, it doesn't even make any sense in the natural. In the natural, I look in the mirror and I see an image of myself. There's nothing that my, does my image in the mirror have to learn something to be like me? No. But in the spiritual mirror, we, this is the spiritual mirror. This world is the spiritual mirror. And we have to learn to reflect the image on the other side of the mirror. It's not an automatic accurate image. We have to be instructed to re reflect the image on the other side of the mirror. So it makes no sense to the natural mind, but that's the reality. So being 40 days tempted of the devil, and 40 days, um, the number 40, it, it typifies a generation. But I believe that this has been going on for believers and will go on for believers until we're all securely um, we're all securely in the image and nature of God. Being 40 days tempted of the devil, who is the devil? The devil is the fallen, the nature of the fallen first Adam that our personality is in agreement with. Okay, and Satan and the devil, Satan is the holy zygote, okay, the righteousness of God that was compromised, okay, and is born into this world as the higher soul of this world along with the Satan and the devil. That's, that's who the snake is. That's who the serpent is. Adam became the snake when he acquired the power of the soul outside of God's uh, timetable. So being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. Now when I was putting this message together this morning, I was really questioning whether it was food that he didn't eat, natural food or physical food or spiritual food. And... I'm, I'm, I'm sort of thinking, I'm sort of coming to the conclusion that he didn't eat any spiritual food. What does that mean? Listen, he was just filled with the Holy Ghost. This, Jesus was, a, was a, a, a Hebrew man raised up. That means he must have been studying Torah since he was three years old. Okay. And now all of a sudden the Spirit is poured out upon him. And the Lord wants to develop the Spirit on him. It's the, it's the next dimension. What do you mean? Why is that the next dimension? Because Jesus has come to promote the next level of soul, which is the Son of God. The Lord would not expose us to the world without, without power to, to access the word and the nature of God and survive over the powers of this world. He wouldn't throw us into this world without, with just an intellectual understanding of the world. He would throw us into this world with the intellectual understanding and the power to overcome the powers of darkness. So we have Jesus has just experienced something new. The Spirit of God has poured out upon him. What spirit? The Spirit of the Son. Because he's, he's, he's acquiring the, the, the Son of God. He's, he's going to be the Son of God. He became the Son of God, okay, because of the spiritual experiences that he was having because of Elijah being incarnate in him. Plus the spirit of, I'm, again, I'm not 100% sure, but the, let's say the spirit of, the, of truth poured out upon him. The spirit of the Father poured out upon him through, through the third grade of soul, which is the Holy Mother. The spirit of life poured out upon him. I'm sorry if that confused you, but that's the best that I can do right now. Because I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to end soon unless I get a real burst of energy here. <laughs> And I would like to get through this. Okay. So he was experiencing something new, the Spirit of God. So I think that 
He was within, he was in the spiritual dimension without doctrine. And that's what happened to the Hebrew children that came out of Egypt. <laughs> they were cut off, they were cut off from the from the doctrine of, of the Egyptian gods. And they were complaining to Moses in the wilderness that they didn't have food to eat, they didn't have water to drink. They were missing the spirituality, the intense spirituality of the pagan worship of the Egyptian gods. So I suggest to you, the Lord might correct me, but this is where I am right now, that Jesus didn't have any spiritual food for 40 days as the Lord was teaching him how to navigate the spiritual dimensions and how to function in the spiritual worlds. So he didn't have any doctrine for 40 days. When those 40 days were ended, he was hungry for doctrine. See, I was in, I was in Pentecost for quite a few years, and I loved the outpouring of the Spirit, and I danced and I sang, and I got slain in the Spirit, and I did all of that. And then I got hungry for doctrine. I was always hungry, but I started starving for doctrine. See, but then the, the, the outpouring of the Spirit can only take you so far. And that's, that's the spirit of the sun. The spirit of truth is a different issue. Okay. Maybe it wasn't the spirit of truth that poured out on him. Maybe it was the, the, uh, the spirit of the sun, the Holy Spirit of promise. I, haven't really, I have not really thought this through. This is a general exhortation. I can't go any deeper because I'm getting tired. So unless the Lord shores me up, that's what let you have for today, okay? That, uh, most likely it was the spirit of the sun that poured out upon the son, Elijah, was in him as the holy thing which made him the son of God. And then the spirit of the son poured out on him. Okay? And for 40 days, he was being instructed in the spirit. And then he was hungry for doctrine and wanted to get back to the doctrine. And the devil said to him, the fallen first Adam that he was in agreement with. What does that mean? It was a do Maybe it was a doctrine that he believed. Maybe... He was hungered, and now he's going to be corrected of false doctrine. Because the devil is the personal soul, the personality, in agreement with the fallen mind of the first Adam. So this was, the, this was the, the carnal man Jesus. He came down out of the spiritual dimension, and his own fallen mind said to him, well, now you have just been instructed in the spirit, and, and you were told that you were a son of God. Well command this stone that it should be made into doctrine for you. Command this stone, command this stony heart, command your own heart, okay, to bring forth doctrine of God. And you just spent 40 days being told that you're the son of God. You should be able to do anything that you want. Bring forth doctrine. Let your stony heart bring forth doctrine. And Jesus answered, so the Christ in Jesus answered his old man, saying, it is written, that man shall not live by doctrine alone, but by the, not every, but by the whole word of God. The word of God is a man. The word of God is ancient Adam. You won't live by, you can't just bring forth doctrine out of a hard heart. That's one of the things that destroyed the seekers that entered into Pardis. You can't live by doctrine alone. You have to, you have to, you have to, you, you, a, a doctrine cannot be an intellectual pursuit. You have to hear the doctrine and then have the experiences that makes that doctrine real flesh to you. That's what it means. Christ said to him, yeah, you can bring forth doctrine if you want. You could probably sit down and bring forth doctrine, but that's not enough. You have to live it. You have to experience it. Brethren, is that not what I'm just telling you, that the Jews are ready for the next level, that they have to have, they have to be released from their parents' uh, apron strings, is that what they apron strings, okay? And, uh, and go forth and have their own experiences. It's not enough to have the intellectual uh, instructions that you've had for your whole life. So you have intellectual instructions, and now you have spiritual instructions, you have to put the two of them together and experience the spiritual life. Have I not been telling you that for years? All that I could do was share with you largely my experiences and give you some warnings about what's safe and what's not safe 
And then you have to go out in the world through your relationship with Jesus and test the waters and have spiritual experiences. And if you mess up, you have to admit it and receive the correction if you want to go forward. Everybody makes mistakes. There's no, there's no maturation without making mistakes, brethren. You have to make mistakes. Get your pride out of the way. And Jesus answered and said, Christ and Jesus said to him, Yes, you can bring forth doctrine. Yes, you can teach doctrine. You're now capable of bringing forth doctrine by revelation. But that's not enough. You have to have the experiences that come from this, uh, from this experience of bringing forth doctrine. You have to experience the doctrine in real time and as you live your life so that you can explain it adequately to yourself and others. Verse 5. And the, doc and the devil taking him up into a high mountain, and mountains are spiritual dimensions, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Brethren, human beings are the kingdoms of the world. Kingdom, the word kingdom talks about the tenth sephirah. And humanity, we are the tenth sephirah. We are Malkut. We're the tip end of the creation that is showing up in the, in the, in the spirit, in the material dimension of the world. So the devil, Jesus, is fallen, is, is an old man, Jesus of Nazareth. He's now two men. Jesus of Nazareth and the Christ is now two men. And his old man is thinking, okay, let me read what it says here. And the devil, his old man, ro rose up in pride. Went up to a high mountain, he rose up in pride. And in his mind's eye, he saw all the kingdoms of the world in a moment to come, all the power he can have by exercising his authority over, over men. Wow, he has all the training of a Hebrew man, and now he's had 40 days of instruction in the Spirit, and he's actually received the Holy Spirit. And his, his old man is thinking, wow, look at what I've got here. I can rule the world. And if you want to make it simpler, I can get myself a congregation and be teaching them and be a great rabbi in Israel. And the devil said unto him, he's talking to himself now, the old, Jesus is old man. This is Jesus of Nazareth, apart from that holy thing, apart, the, the Christ in him is Elijah. And the devil said to him, All this power will I give you, and the glory of the opinion of all of those people, they'll worship you. For that is delivered unto me. I have the ability, <clears throat> I, have the, I now have, can bring forth this, this revelation of the doctrine, which attracts Hebrew, especially Hebrew men, and I can gather all of Israel unto myself by the doctrine that I teach. That's my understanding. The Jews, I'm not saying there was no move of the spirit at all, but they were primarily intellectual, like I am now, for those of you that are like me. Primarily intellectual, I like the music, but there's no contest if I have to choose. So the Jesus of Nazareth without Elijah said to himself, all of this power, I'm gonna have all of this power, they're all, going to have an opinion, a good opinion of me. They'll follow after me. They'll want to hear my studies. I'll be a great rabbi in Israel. For that is delivered unto me. That's the old man, I now have it. I've received it, I have the doctrine, I have the spirit, I have it. And I can use it to gather men unto myself and be a great rabbi in, in Israel. And to whomsoever I will give it. I can give this doctrine to whoever I want to. I'm a great teacher now. I have the doctrine and the spirit. I'm coming now preaching my revelation. I can give it to anyone that I want. I can be a great man in Israel. If thou wilt worship me, all shall be thine. He's thinking to himself. 
is Jesus' fallen mind saying to the personal soul, Jesus of Nazareth, worship me, choose me, and everything I have I'll give you. I'll give you a great following, you'll be a great man. The female in this, the female in this is Jesus of Nazareth. And he is his old man, the higher soul of the first Adam, telling him all this. I may have said it wrong a few minutes ago. Jesus of Nazareth, he's the female. He has to choose between the fallen first Adam that's promising the glory of being a great rabbi in a nation that idolizes its teachers. And now we're going to see what Elijah has to say to him. Elijah, his instructor. And Jesus answered. That's Elijah now. And Jesus answered and said unto his own self, his other side, Get thee behind me, Satan. Because Satan is the tempter. Now, in the sentence, listen, the verse starts out with the devil and it goes to Satan. And the devil said to him, Okay, the fallen nature of the first Adam said to him, that's himself. Okay, that's his old personality. But Satan is the one that put the thought in his mind. The Satan is the one that the thought comes into the unconscious part of the mind and tempts the personality. And that was the personality, the one in the middle, okay, that has to choose the woman, whether she's going to choose to follow the, fall, the first Adam or the second Adam. The devil is the personality in agreement with the first Adam. He's believing all this, okay? That all of that can be his. And Jesus, Elijah, the personality of Jesus of Nazareth joined with Elijah said, Get thee behind me, Satan, okay? The, tempt the tempter of the first Adam. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. No personal ministry, no personally following disciples after myself. I will teach and minister only as the Lord instructs me to do so for the glory of God, for his purposes, for his agenda. Verse 9. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle, that's the high place of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from here. So this is the devil okay, that brought him to the, the level of the soul. Jerusalem is the, is, the soul that, um, is the soul made up of the soul parts of Adam that Jehovah dwells in. He brought him to the level of the soul and set him on a high place of the temple. Jesus is the temple. Okay, he set him up above. He showed him... Um, the first Adam showed Jesus how he's now higher than the average man in Israel. He set him in a high place in the temple and said to him, If you be the Son of God, cast yourself down from hence. And this is what came to me this morning. This is all new to me. That the temptation was, take a look at yourself. See how high you've become. And brother, this applies to all of us here. Take a look at yourself and see how much higher we are than the average Christian out there. We cannot lord it over them. We're to be their humble servant. Anyone that God sends to us, we have to humble ourselves and tell them what God wants us to tell them. But this particular verse, what I believe was being said to him, was, if you be the, if you be the Son of God, cast yourself down from this high place. You've been raised up to this high place. We have all this knowledge, all this wisdom and spiritual power. Now get down there and have an experience as a natural man and use your power, just by example, to attract a woman to yourself. Use your power uh, to go to the horse races and know what you're supposed to bet on. You know, Go into the world as a natural man, but use your power to enhance your life as a natural man. For it is written, and he brought him to Jerusalem. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. Paul said, all things are expedient. I'm sorry, all things are legal unto me, but everything is not expedient. So that temptation was 
Jesus being told, look at how high you've risen above the average, your fellow man, and you have all of this wisdom. Now go live your life as a natural man with this enhancement so that you can be great in the world. And don't worry about it, because in their hands, that's in the mind of God's angels, okay? They will keep charge over you. They'll give you the wisdom that you need, okay? Even though you've received all this wisdom in a high spiritual plane, don't be afraid to come down out of your meditation. Don't be afraid to come down out of your trance. Go back into being a natural man, and the angels that were instructing you in the spiritual dimension will stay with you as a natural man, and they will keep you in the wisdom that you that was just demonstrated to you. Lest at any time you should dash your foot, which is your carnal mind, against a stone. Any time you get messed up down there because your carnal mind doesn't have the answer, doesn't know how, how to act, how to act in a particular situation, or how to complete the business deal. Okay, don't worry. The angels, which is the mind of Christ, will be there to get you out of your trouble. Go. This is a way out example, but this is what's in my mind. Go to the racetrack, okay? And when you're standing right in the window wanting to buy the ticket, okay? And all of a sudden you can't remember what God told you. Of course, that wouldn't be true, but you heard in your own mind, you thought it was God. <coughs> what you should bet, don't worry about it. The angels, your Christ mind will come through and remind you the name of the horse that you're supposed to bet on. So that's a way out example. Does that make any sense to you, what I'm talking about? And Jesus answering said to him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I will not use the power of God to go to the racetrack. And believe he's going to give me the name of the horse that will make me wealthy. Now, brethren, I, in the days of my discipleship, there were a lot of Christians that believed that, that they would buy a lottery ticket, you know, that they had been promised a, a ministry or money or whether God promised it to them or not, I don't know, but they thought they needed to fund their ministry and they would go out and buy lottery tickets. God doesn't honor that, brethren. I did it once myself. This ministry was in poverty for a long time. I would have tried anything until finally I just accepted that I had to stay in poverty until the Lord raised me up out of it and raised the ministry up out of it. Yeah. It doesn't work. You cannot, you cannot fund your own ministry. <laughs> God doesn't... It's, I mean, he could do anything that he wants, but not likely he's going to give you money through a lottery ticket. He gives you money through the people that appreciate your teaching. He told me that a long time ago, that there isn't any money coming into this ministry from, from odd or strange sources through the Internet. It's only coming through people that are benefiting from this ministry. That's what he told me many years ago. So he said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then the devil, and when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. That means the temptation would continue on a higher dimension. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So he became famous. Why did he become famous? Well, he started doing miracles. So all of this temptation came before he started doing miracles. He had to be instructed and find out that he can't take any credit for it. He can't do anything that the Lord doesn't give him, tell him to do or anoint him to do. And then it's all the work of the Lord for the Lord's glory, for the Lord's purposes. And then he went down, he did miracles, and he became famous. And he taught in their synagogue being glorified of all. Glorified means opinion, having the opinion of God. That's it, brethren.